Good morning, everybody. Crossing Journey here. That Journey Tick on Instagram. It's Thursday. Yeah, almost the weekend. I'm ready. Okay, stitches in the curtains. He's a busy little kitty, I tell ya. They got me up. I thought it was time to get up. Little did I know. It was like 5.30. I had set my alarm for 6.30. Anyway, I was up. So, I did my thing, got my shower. Do, do, do. Okay. You know what I did this morning? I filled in my planner. I use it sometimes more of a journal, you know, to you know, memorialize what I did on a particular day. I've started three hats this week. Can you believe it? Finished one of them. Uh, the other two will not be difficult to finish. I think that's pretty good. Three hats. I'm going to take so, take them to the retreat and um, see if anybody wants to buy them. This is the one I finished. The one that I had on yesterday. The Boogie Nights hat. I'm not putting it on. It's hotter than Hades. Um, what is going on in this country with the heat? Oh my god. As I drink my coffee. Right? Hot coffee. Although, it's not hot anymore. Lukewarm. Lukewarm. Hi, Stitch. He is so busy. He's so busy. Yesterday, he fell asleep in my suitcase. I'll put a picture right here. Him sleeping in my suitcase. Um, I have this small suitcase that I take back and forth to work because I take my, you know, I record the show and then I take my computer uh, to work. And then, like, on on Fridays, I have to bring both the computers home because, you know, Monday and Tuesday I work from home. So it's just easier to put, you know, whatever projects I have and all that stuff into the suitcase. So uh, it's his favorite place to play. Pearl's too. I don't know where Pearl is. Tootsie. Oh my God. She got up, went outside, you know, did her thing, came back in and promptly went into my sister's room, went back to bed. She's like, I'm done with you, Mom. Bye. <laughs> yeah, that's how much I mean to her. She loves my sister. Anyway. <sighs> and last night, none of them would come to bed. They all wanted to stay up with her. I'm like, wow, everyone has abandoned me. Where are my pens? Well, I had craft with me Wednesday last night, so the pens went back into the container. That was a fun show last night. I was teaching how to do this very simple hat. And for those of you who got to row six, let me just tell you very quickly, after row six, everything is a double crochet in the next stitch. All for 20 more rows, or 22 more rows, 22 rows, total 22 rows. So you should still use your stitch marker for each row, but it's just a continuous circle of double crochets all the way to the end in each stitch. So, if Mil Wilma, I'm talking to you, if you want to finish it, go right ahead. Um, but we will be working on it again next week. For anybody that missed it or, you know, that wants to continue. Oh, gosh. So, you know, Wednesdays are these just crazy days because, you know, I got to do the show, go to work, go to physical therapy, come home, do the do my other, you know, craft with me Wednesday. Then last night I had a, a meeting with uh, Treasure Studios Arts to discuss the creatives for the Halloween collaboration coming up. That should come out any day now. You, I'm so excited. You guys are going to start getting sneak peeks at what's to come in the Halloween collab with Jennifer Roberts. Monster Mash. It's DP Monster Mash. Hashtag DP Monster Mash on Instagram. Well, not yet, but that's what it will be. Um... <clears throat> Oh, see, I thought that was three, and it's two. 
That's what I get for not turning on the light pad. Come on, go down, down. That drill just does not want to go there. Okay, fine, never mind. I didn't want to put you there anyway. There we go. <laughs> Talking to my drills. Do you talk to your drills? <sighs> and then I got to talk to one of my besties last night. That was fun. I hadn't had a nice conversation with her in a while. Um, and every time to, I talk to her, I learn more about crochet because she's way more knowledgeable than I am. So it's always, you know, and I listened to Marissa, you know, the crafty heifer. She came on after I did. And she had this fantastic idea that, you know, put together a local group in your area and I thought, yeah, oh, that's a great idea. So, I'm going to find a local group. Like, maybe, a, or I'll start a local group of diamond painters, or I think I want to start a local, I don't know, crafters, crocheters, I don't know. Loom knitters. Because <laughs> I certainly need to learn a lot more about loom knitting. Um... I'm going to have to see what's out there. I'll have to go to like Joann's. Maybe they know if there's a group, a local group. Or I or I just start one. But where would I advertise? Maybe Facebook? Like how would I put the word out that I'm going to start a group, a local group? Hmm. Hmm. I don't know. But I bet you guys have some ideas on the subject. So, let me know what you think. I wish some of you guys lived in my area. I really do. Maybe you do. And I just don't know it. Now, I know, like the girls at work, crochet. One of them is really into the cricket. Yeah. One crochets, but she's really into remodeling her home right now like do-it-yourself remodeling yeah so but last year she made a Christmas tree skirt so they might even have some ideas I'm gonna ask them today if maybe they know of some local groups that would get me out of the house yes um yeah I don't leave the house often enough cuz I'm so busy um, anyway. So what was I doing last night? Oh! <sighs> For some reason, I never finished season four of Outlander. I started it, so I was flipping through Netflix, and I thought, why didn't I finish this? So I went into the episode, and they're very long episodes, so I ended up falling asleep before the end of it. Kitty, kitty. And then uh, it's one of those where you wake up right at the end and you find out how it ends, but you forget, you don't re remember what happened between the beginning and the end. So I'm going to have to watch it again. I think I got most of it. I got the gist of it. I've read the books, all of the those books, um, years ago. Diane Gabaldon. Yeah. Good books. Oh, so many. Seven or eight of them, I think. Yeah. And I know... What, what are they on on the regular season five or six? I have all those channels. I, like, I mean, Cox gave me a deal. Like, yeah, they gave me a deal last time I called for service. Hey, or, I don't know, like $20 a month, you get everything for an uh, unlimited amount. Like, it doesn't end, I think. I think. I don't know. It sounded too good to be true. We'll see. What is that cat doing? Where's Pearl? What did you do with Pearl? Oh, let me show you the other hat I'm making. I've got it right here. Oh, I've got it right here. This one is a little bit more of an involved pattern than the, the one I did last night on the show. But it's still that same... Um, I love this show. Ferris wheel yarn, but it's like the orange one. Look how pretty that is coming out. And um, it's just so, it 
it's like a ripple, you know, and it's really, really pretty. I just love Ferris wheel yarn. So I, I was told that it's a roving yarn. Um, so I'm going to have to start looking around at some other companies that have roving yarn because it's beautiful. It makes gorgeous hats. All right, what was I doing? What was I doing? Oh, I need a nap. I know, I just woke up. And I'm already thinking about breakfast, but I gotta go to work. Okay, let's do, um, it is National Middle Child Day. Yes, I am not a middle child. Uh, my sister is the middle child. So like the middle, the older child is like the leader, you know. That was me. I was the oldest child. And then the youngest child is the baby. So there could be several middle children. But the middle children are, you know, they don't have a label. So today, pay attention to the middle child. If you're older, call them up. Say, hey, you want to have a cup of coffee with mom or dad or, you know, whatever. Um, yeah, pay attention to your middle child today. Like I said yesterday, take them for a walk. Make a phone call to them or text them. You know, like my children, you got to text. Um, birth order may contribute to the five big personalities. Traits, extroversion neuroticism, agreeableness, conscientiousness, and openness. So they, a study that was done showed that the middle child is very creative and artistic. So how many of you are middle childs? Yeah. Are you creative and artistic? I bet you are because you're listening to me. Um, or you're listening for the crime. I don't know. Hopefully, uh, you're listening to me while you're creating. Yes, that's that's what I do this for. So you can listen while you create. <sighs> anyway, make them their favorite homemade dish. Is it spaghetti? Oh my God, I laughed the other day. I was listening to um, Lizzie's, oh gosh, it used to be Lizzie's World of Vapes. Now it's Lizzie's a world of jets. Lizzie's jet. Yeah, Lizzie's world of jets. So she had um, Trevor on from Europe. He's from London. And um, his name is Kiss My Stained Glass. Um, those are their channel names. And she asked him what he had for dinner last night. And he said spaghetti bolognese. And she's like, what's that? She's from Canada. And I'm thinking, it's just regular spaghetti. And he's like, he's describing it to her. And, I, and I'm like, I put in the chat, it's regular spaghetti. Everybody's doing that. It's just regular spaghetti. It was funny. It was very funny. <laughs> we just don't add the bolognese. And then he said they call it a spag bowl or something. I don't know. Something weird. Spag bot, spag bowl. I don't know. I just call it spaghetti, which is what I was going to have for dinner last night. Leftovers, but my sister didn't feel well. Her stomach was upset. So I made me one of my little Totino's pizzas after my live. These are these um, cheapo pizzas that, you know, you're so hungry, you don't care what it tastes like. You just pop it in the oven. I added a little mozzarella to it and some Parmesan cheese. And then I pop it in the oven. Delicious. <sighs> okay. We can talk about Judge, Jury, and Journey. You know what? <laughs> the Law and Crime Network is still showing the Durst trial. Oh my God. I just don't know when this thing is ever going to end. And then the other trial on the other channel is day four of a sentencing. And I have never seen a sentencing go on for four days. So what's happening is there... I. I'm assuming that he has declared insanity and they have to bring in different experts. But four days worth of experts? Well, I'm sure there's some from each side, you know. The defense 
would start the case putting on their experts and then the rebuttal would, you know, the prosecution would put on their experts to say, no, he's not insane. I, I guess it could last four days, but oh, it seems very odd. Anyway, I expect a new trial to start any day now. And I can't wait to bring it to you. I, I want to bring you something live, you know. But anyway, let's go back to the Curtis Flowers case. I forgot my notebook yesterday. So I took notes. Um, anyway, so um, interestingly, and one of the, you know, I told you he had been tried six times for the, for the, murders of these four people in the Tardy Furniture Store in this small town in Mississippi. And it was the same prosecutor. It's This thing went on for 24 years. Tried him six times. Um, the first three times he was sentenced. He was found guilty and sentenced to the death penalty. But it was overturned by a higher court for misconduct by the prosecutor this Doug Evans guy. And then um, the fourth and fifth time were hung juries. So one of the hung juries, um, I saw, you know, the show that I'm watching, they interviewed one of the jurors and he was saying that when they first went back, it was, you know, there's always 12 jurors. When they first went back, um, nine were for guilty, three were for not guilty and he was one of the not guilty. So by the time they finished their deliberations, it was 11 guilty, and he remained not guilty, steadfast, wasn't gonna change his mind. So, and this was a black man. So they go back out and they say, you know, we cannot reach a decision. So the judge declares a mistrial. Then the judge calls him up to the bench, the, the lone holdout. Now you're not supposed to know what's going on in the jury room. Now how this judge figured out it was this guy, I don't know, you know. He's, if, I guess if you ask the judge, he's gonna say he didn't know. He brings this guy up and admonishes him for committing perjury during jury selection. And the guy's like, I don't know what you're talking about. And they showed footage of him yelling at this guy. They have him arrested. They put him in jail. Later on, the charges are dropped. He's never tried for perjury. But the effect that that had on the town was like nobody wanted to be on this jury. So, <laughs> so then the sixth trial comes around and he is convicted again and sentenced to the death penalty. So, you know, and he's been in jail all of this time. So, um, so then uh, there was an interview with uh, a guy named Frederick Veal, who was a jailhouse informant. And he said, they came to me, they said, we want you, we're gonna put you in the cell with Curtis Flowers, we want you to get him to confess. Now, first of all, this is prosecutorial misconduct at its finest because once a person is represented by counsel, you can't do that kind of stuff. Now, if they're sitting in jail and they don't have a lawyer, you can put a snitch in there and try to get a confession. But you can't do that after they're represented by counsel. So they put this guy in there. Now, no, Curtis never <laughs> confessed to this guy, but this guy was, pro he says, I was promised money and all these things, none of which I ever saw, to testify that he had confessed to me. So that's what I did. I testified, because, you know, he says, I was young. Uh, I was, you know, I was getting, they were getting ready to let me out of prison. I needed, you know, I needed some money. So, you know, the money looked good to me, so I said it, I went and testified. So pretty much every witness against this guy recanted, said, listen, I, I lied. I was offered money, I was offered this, that, and the other, but that neighbor came through and what I said was a lie. 
um, really. In fact, the the one guy they said they, you know, he was he was already out of jail. They bring him into a hotel the night before the trial. They give him a transcript to memorize of the confession. So he sits and memorizes the confession that supposedly he was he got from Curtis Flowers in jail. Crazy, crazy. Um, another, you know, a guy named Maurice Hawkins, a guy named Odell Holman. All these people said, oh yeah, he told me he did it, you know, during jail. They all recanted their stories. So, then we got, there was, interestingly enough, in the next state over, Alabama, there was a, a, a group of these guys that were committing armed robberies with uh, this 380. Um, and they never looked in to see whether maybe these people were the, the culprits. Um, I mean, it wasn't even investigated. I mean, it might not have been anything, but it, you know, it wasn't even investigated. Another interesting thing is a week before the murders, that same furniture store was burglarized. Somebody broke in through the roof. Nothing was stolen. They couldn't find anything that had been taken. But when the murders occurred, um, like I said yesterday, the whoever committed the murders went out the back door. In order to get out the back door, you would have needed a key. So they, you know, the police kept saying, oh no, these things were unrelated. The burglary and the murders were unrelated, but it's very likely that the burglary, they stole the key, and now they had a key to get in. The other theory is, you know, what, could one person have really committed the murder of four people? I mean, once you shot the first person, wouldn't you think the other three would be running? And it doesn't appear that they were. So somebody was controlling these people, you know, while they were shot. And then another interesting thing was the, the owner of the furniture store, Mr. Tardy, his wife was there, but he was very ill, he was in a wheelchair, but she would, every single day, she would wheel him to the furniture store. He never missed a day of going to that furniture store. Even though he was ill, he was in a wheelchair, he would go every single day to that furniture store, except this day. She left him at home. She got shot and killed three other people. Did they ever investigate? Did he put a hit on them? Why wasn't he there that day? Nobody knows now because he's dead. So, <laughs> um, yeah. So here's what ends up happening. So the sixth trial goes to the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court agrees to hear the case. Um, there were there was a podcast that I listened to. It's called In the Dark. Two seasons of the, this in-depth investigation into these murders. Um, there was this sh other show that I watched uh, called Wrong Man and uh, probably several other investigatory uh, agencies going in and, and, and I mean everyone thought this was wrong and that this man was had been wrongfully accused and had sat in jail for 23 years. So the Supreme Court, it goes to the Supreme Court, the Supreme Court Again, prosecutorial misconduct that he was, um, you know, manipulating the jury. <laughs> so they send it back. They overturn the verdict. So let's, let me tell you what the timeline was. Um, November 2008, yeah, the, the sixth trial happens in 2010, June of 2010. So eight years later, eight years later, this U.S. Supreme Court agrees to hear the case, and then they overturn um, the case in a seven to two ruling. Now the ruling doesn't come out till 2019, so now nine years, nine years after the trial, this Supreme Court rules that, you know, you, it can now go back for another trial. 
um, they said that this prosecutor discriminated against black prospective jurors at the sixth trial. I think he did it at one through five as well. Then in December of 2019, they finally release Curtis Flowers on bail pending a seventh trial. So he's out on bail. Somebody anonymously donates $250,000 for his bail. How cool is that? Um, then in January of 2020, the prosecutor says, I'm going to recuse myself. Now what, what that means is he's not, he's stepping back. Someone else can do it. Um, when you recuse yourself, you're, you're admitting that you're, you know, you're, you're too personally involved and, or too invested in what's going on that someone else with more perspective should step in. So he finally agreed to recuse himself, take himself off the case. He sends the case to the Mississippi State Attorney General's office and says, here, you guys deal with this. Um, in February of 2020, they take over the case, the, the Mississippi U.S. Attorney General's office. They begin their review, and in September of 2020, they drop all of the charges. So Curtis Flowers is now a free man. Which begs the question, who killed those four people in the furniture store? Now, some people believe that Curtis Flowers might have some information about who really did it. But is he ever going to say anything? Probably not. Um, the, the, the most likely suspects have passed away. Either Mr. Tardy or um, there was a couple of other people that could have could have been very good suspects. The man that reported his gun missing you know, 10 minutes after the murder, um, he's passed away. Um, his brother, who could have done it with him, he's passed away. So, hopefully this is the end of this case. I hope that this town can heal, recover, come together, come into the, you know, 22nd century, whatever century we're on, you know, come into the future. Um, and get past all of that you know it's it's something that divided that town for 25 years it's crazy so anyway i hope to have a trial for you tomorrow i hope i hope that's fingers crossed if not um we'll have something we'll do something for judge jury and journey <laughs> so let's do this day in history. Oh, by the way, guys, new segment. <laughs> You're like, what? Another new segment? No, it's not, it's not a big deal, really. Okay, there are 80 days till Halloween. Yes, 80 days till Halloween and 135 days till Christmas. Do you like this segment or should I? Is it too soon? Too soon? Okay. Well, 80 days till Halloween, okay? We can leave the Christmas out for now. 105 days till Thanksgiving. Think about your turkey. You gonna buy it? Or are you gonna, are you gonna go turkey hunting and find bodies? Do you remember that last case I did? The turkey hunters found the body? Yeah, no. I'm buying mine at Publix, the grocery store. Yeah, I wish there were Publixes here in, in this state, but there aren't. Anyway. Do, 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 this day in history. <laughs> oh my God. I get these pop-ups. It's crazy. August 12th, 1990. The skeleton of a T-Rex, a Tyrannosaurus Rex, intact, is found jutting out of a cliff near Faith, South Dakota. So, the guy that owns the land, um, he's paid by, what is it, Maurice Williams. 
He's paid, paid by the Black Hills Institute of Geological Research um, to let them come on his land to excavate this thing. They gave him $5,000. $5,000 in 1990. That's nothing. Anyway, he takes the $5,000. They come on the land. They excavate this thing. They put him in a museum. It's incredible. This thing is 65 million years old. 65 million years old. Here is a picture of the skeleton in the museum. And I'm also including a picture of what it would look like, like recreated what it would look like, you know, with its skin on, with something in its mouth, because this is a carnivore. He eats meat. Um, they also said he had a intact wishbone which leads them to the conclusion that because birds also have intact wishbones that birds are like some sort of um, ancestor of dinosaurs yeah interesting huh listen i had a parrot once he was a mean old thing <laughs> He could, he could have been re related to a dinosaur. Anyway, so what, what ends up happening is that the federal government comes in and says, no, this is federal land. Maurice, you don't own this land. You, could, you didn't have the right to take that money and let them excavate. You know, so we get to have that dinosaur. Um, and then they found out that Williams, a part Native American and member of the Cheyenne River Sioux Tribe, had traded his land to the tribe 20 years prior to that, earlier to avoid paying taxes. So it was never his. He never had the rights to give this company uh, to come on that land and excavate. So what ends up happening is this T-Rex thing goes up for auction. Sotheby's puts it up for auction. It's bought for $8.36 million. Um, it goes into the Chicago's Field Museum, and the purchaser in part was McDonald's and the Disney Corporation. Yep. That's the truth. So, where is... Uh, okay. I would like to go see this, the Chicago Field Museum, okay? So we're going to we're going to head over to Alcatraz, which is nowhere near Chicago, and head to the Chicago Museum to see the dinosaur. This was a big old thing. Big old thing. 13 feet high at its hips and 42 feet long from head to toe. 42 feet. 2,000 pound skull, 58 teeth. Yeah. I bet the kids would enjoy that. I bet the middle child would enjoy that. What do you think? <laughs> yep. I think you're right, Rebecca. Okay. That's today's Thursday show of Crafting and Crime. I hope you enjoyed it. Tonight is Wolfpack. Yep, Wolfpack. She's going to dine and for you. Check her out. And uh, I don't know who else. I just, I watch Wolfpack. Anyway, I will see you tomorrow in Crafting and Crime. And, uh, or maybe in a Zoom between now and then. Bye, everybody.